So today I want to talk about the cushions inside of your dinette. Are you sick and tired of every time you sit in them that the cushions want to slide out from underneath of you? Well, I have just a fix for you. So my wife the other day was looking online because she was talking about the cushions in the house on our couch as well as the one inside the camper and how they keep slipping out and found this right here. So I figured why not? Let's go ahead and give it a shot and see how easy it is to install and whether or not it really works well or not. So before we get to actually installing it, I want to show you what it is. There are two parts to this, and this right here is nothing more than just the same stuff that is Velcro. This, this is the like carpety side, and this part right here is the Velcro or the hook and loop or the, I don't know, whatever you got. This side that you stick to it so that when you pull it apart, it makes that little funny sound like this. So yes, this is nothing more than just really wide, really big, really long Velcro. And when we bought it off of Amazon, if you look right here, it'll show that it is 5.9 inches wide by 10 feet long. So we are gonna test this out after we get it installed, but I wanna show you how it's done. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is take the cushion and set it upside down. I'm gonna cut a strip long enough to put on one side and then the matched length of a strip on the opposite side. Now that I have that strip on the cushion, you may ask, how am I gonna get the other side on the board and have it aligned correctly? And the answer there is pretty easy. I'm gonna take the opposite side of the Velcro and I'm gonna cut it to the same length, go ahead and put it on top of it with the sticky side up. And that way, when I flip the cushion over and put it in place and then pat it down, it's gonna be stuck to the board. Now, with that being said though, it's not completely stuck to the board really well. We have to pat it down. So how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna reach up underneath and kind of separate the Velcro so that I can get the cushion back up. And then from there, go ahead and pat down the other side of the Velcro really good so that it sticks to the board. And then go ahead and put the cushion back and then push the two Velcro pieces together so they stick really well. Now the ultimate question here, and the same question that I had, is whether or not this is gonna really work. Is it gonna stick and is it gonna hold the cushion in place? Good question, right? Kind of the whole purpose of putting this in. So now that I got the Velcro on both sides and the cushion back in place, I'm gonna go ahead and sit there and see if I can scoot around, try to get the cushion to move. And as you can see right here, to my surprise also, just in case any of you may be surprised or skeptical, the cushion did not move. And because of that, I am comfortable to say that this is gonna actually work. Now, whether it stays there over time, hot, cold, everything else, I don't know, we'll see over time, but for now, it actually works really well. So if this is something that you would like to do to your rig, then uh, look down in the description below. I'll leave a link to how you can buy some of this for yourself, get it installed, matter of no time. I think this whole setup took me maybe five, 10 minutes to do the whole thing and everything's done and ready to go. All right, now to viewers comments. The first comment came from George Huerta1990 on the video, water pressure regulator RV accessory must have. The comment says, is it 40 PSI on the gauge while the water is running? Because when I turn off the water, it goes up to 65 PSI and that concerns me. Well, George, you're very right here because it should concern you. You should never have your rig up to 65 PSI. So the whole deal here is that when you set up your regulator and you dial in your pressure, you want it to be around 30, 35 PSI, maybe 40, if the water is not running inside of your RV. So go ahead and connect your water regulator, all your hoses and all that stuff, turn on the water, go inside of your rig, turn on all the faucets and get all the air out, then turn them back off and go out and see what the pressure is. From there, if the water pressure is a little too high, then dial down the regulator on the top with the screw, go back inside, turn the water on, back off, and then go out and look at the gauge again. So if you keep following that process, eventually you'll get the pressure where you want it and you'll be good to go from there on. The next comment came from Chad Smith 1092 on the video Water Leaked in My RV Resolve 2021. And his comment said, Awesome idea. I literally just had this happen this weekend. And I was trying to think of a way to avoid it from ever happening again. Thank you. So what Chad is talking about here is this little thing inside of your RV called a vacuum breaker. And you'll typically find this somewhere in your RV where water comes in and goes to your black tank for the black tank flush. What will happen with the vacuum breaker is that every now and then this little flapper valve inside of the thing will actually open up and stay stuck open. So when you hook up the water, it'll shoot out the top of it and you'll have water everywhere inside of your rig. This happened to many of people and that's why I wanted to share that video. 
And if you're interested to find out how, what all that is, then I'll leave a link down in the description for you to get to that video. But thank you, Chad. And this next comment comes from Gippy Camper on the video, Halo View BT7 RV backup camera, worth it. Camera, not microphone. Mm. There we go. And he says, I love my BT7. It sleeps and bounds better than the previous model I had, which I was also happy with, LOL. Well, Gimpy Camper, I must say I didn't have the older version. This is the only one I've had, but I am very happy with it nevertheless. And if any of you out there are wondering what I'm talking about, it is a backup camera made by Halo View. But Gimpy Camper, I want to say thank you for putting in this comment because it does reassure to me that this is a good camera for somebody on their rig. And if I'm going to make videos about something, is the purchase well worth it or not? So back to the cushions and the Velcro. It was well worth the purchase. Not everything has to be super expensive or super hard to install. In this case, it was something easy and really worked out well. So until the next time I see you, enjoy your camping trips, be safe out there, and God bless.